session will be on essential design principles of Tableau. I request all the participants to give your full attention to Mr. Sudarshan and make the session more interesting and interactive one. I now request Mr. Sudarshan to take over the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, welcome back to the session now. Uh, so, like, uh, we are in the midst of uh, our session at uh, I stopped uh, purposefully at the data preparation process in the morning session because uh, it needs a continuity. Like, uh, while preparing the data and visualizing, we need to find like uh, what is the basic design principles which we need to adopt. Uh, like, uh, so that uh, that's. It's actually like a continuous process. While preparation using data design principles, we need to show them into uh, the screen. So I uh, left it in the middle of the session, in the second session. Okay, so like uh, while preparing, I mean, what is actually mean by data preparation? Data preparation is nothing but uh, making the data simpler. Like um, if uh, any user who wants to analyze any set of data, then uh, he, would have, he would have got or received uh, plenty of data, which is actually unprocessed raw data. Like uh, then he needs to make them in a proper readable format. Uh, like uh, he would have got uh, one particular data set at one point of time, another particular data set at another point of time. Uh, however, these two data would have got a relation between each other. So, like uh, the way in which it is going to get related with each other, we need to find out. And that process is called like a data processing. After processing the data, we need to make it in a simple way, like uh, make it uh, very simple and clear for the user to understand. I mean, before uh, making user to understand, we need to make ourselves understand uh, with the data in a better way so that we can uh, get a better reports. So, like uh, uh, the basic principle in uh, data preparation is nothing but an extract, transform, and loading process. Extract is like extracting the data from a number of data sources. Uh, then how do we transform that? And then uh, again, loading it into the report. Uh, this is the basic thing. But uh, in depth, we do have lots and lots of uh, methodologies, principles, algorithms, and those things which we adopting at. Uh, whenever it is required. So like uh, with respect to extra with uh, any type of files, uh, and obviously you can easily uh, collect the data from that file and you can put it uh, into the tab itself and we can uh, process it. And uh, if in case if the data source is uh, different, like if it is a database, then we need to connect uh, to the database via driver and then we need to pull the data and then we have to put it into the shelf tableau and then we have to work on it. Uh, if it is cloud, then we need to connect with the extension APIs or something like that. Uh, um, maybe uh, extension APIs with respect to AWS cloud data source and all. And if it is a normal cloud source, then we can go for this. Um, still, even that too will have a, that too will require uh, connectors, but not in the form of API. Maybe normal username credential authentication password, or else may, it might be like a uh, LDAP. Uh, credentials, I mean, mutually uh, signed uh, or a single sign in application, like that it could be. Uh, we, if after get, extracting the data from all those things, then we need to transform them. Like a transformation is nothing but, uh, say, for example, if there is a data, like uh, for the uh, tenure of 12 months, uh, in that uh, um, it has got some uh, segregations, like uh, if January month has got uh, Four class, four types of uh, data, and um, March is having you know, four types of data, and uh, maybe out of those twelve months, maybe a few months, like uh, maybe two or three months, might not have all those four types of data. In that case, then we need to normalize them. If uh, the, the expense would have happened in those two months also, then how much it would be? Like that, we need to calculate, and we should take an average or something like that. Maybe we need to. Uh, multiply it exponentially based upon the actual thing which has happened that we need to check with the respective team members. I mean the client people. 
then uh, we need to do such a uh, kind of transformation like joins uh, and uh, then a comparison between two tables uh, and then um, those kind of joins or uh, transformation should be done then it should be loaded again into the tableau shelf tableau shelf is nothing but the table where you can see the joins the union connections of our those two or more different tables uh, in uh, one or more two i mean two or more uh, data sources like simple uh, you can connect data from one table from, uh, which is uh, which exists in one data source with another table which is existing in another data source say for example i have two databases with a uh, schema o uh, o i mean uh, let me make it simple i have two schemas one is like a object schema and the other one is like a entity schema uh, like uh, in object schema there are uh, n number of tables and uh, this entity schema is having a number of tables uh, only difference between these two tables are like uh, i mean uh, these two are two different databases uh, yes i do can can I connect this uh, this database could be like uh, it could be uh, oracle database and uh, this entity schema could be like uh, it could be postgres sql whatever the data sources it may be we can interconnect with each other and we can get the data and we can load them into a uh, report uh, Similarly, like a tableau is not the only tool that is existing in the market uh, for uh, this data visualization. Yes, there are lots and lots of tools like a Power BI, Informatica, and then Rapid Miner. Rapid Miner is like uh, it's also a similar kind of software for used for uh, data visualization, but uh, reporting is not like uh, that up to that extent of a tableau. Uh, then uh, Informatica is actually a good enough tool for data analysis, not for visualization. um you can integrate with the um, python languages and all very easily in informatica even in tableau also you can do the same thing with respect with the help of uh, calculator fields uh, then data data handling and data preparation capacity okay fine now uh, with respect to data handling like uh, in the commercial scale like uh, not only one people will be handling all the uh, data all the data like each and every people belonging to each and every uh, i mean team or something team or any each and every division will be working on a data so like uh, <coughs> each and every person will be uh, having his own raw data and they will be processing it and they will push into the server to, uh, by, i mean uh, each after other after pushing into the server then the main person who is totally in charge in uh, uh, making the report will uh, collect all those data and then he will uh, refresh them refresh in the sense like uh, not exactly refreshing but uh, he will uh, like uh, um, reorient the data reorientation in the sense like uh, he will combine the data each other with each other so that it will form into a shape after shaping this data like uh, then he will work on it like uh, preparation capacity is nothing but um, each and every person who is working in a different machine Uh, will be having their own capacity their own capacity in the sense like uh, uh, as i told like in uh, distributed tableau ecosystem or tableau environment each and every person who is looking after each and every node will have their own capacity of uh, maybe one person might be having more visql capacity visql in the sense like more querying capacity one person might be having more uh, custom component i mean uh, collection capacity then like that there are many uh, features which uh, each and every people will be looking into so like uh, after doing all those things it will come to the uh, i mean it will come to the it will go to the direct um, target person as a proper formatted report okay fine in the data preparation actually it is a five step process like uh, de shelving disintegrating diagnosing developing and demonstrating let me tell you like what is actually each and every okay uh, de shelving de shelving is nothing but um, here actually what is the meaning for shelf is actually nothing but in let us come consider with a simple example in our house we will be having like a uh, wardrobes in each and every wardrobe we will be having each and every maybe dress or i mean clothes or uh, you might be having a uh, uh, vegetable something or uh, maybe groceries whatever it may be you will be uh, getting if you want to prepare something you need to get them out from that shelf which is nothing but de shelving how can we uh, compare this as analogous with the data sciences like i mean uh, data which analytics and visualizations like uh, 
will be getting data from different data sources here data sources are the shelves data is the product from the respective data sources and uh, what is happening here means like uh, after getting those data individually we'll be putting them into the shelf uh, before putting them into the shelf like uh, we need to disintegrate them say for example we have got a uh, data for a uh, n number of years uh, in that case like a uh, n number of years from each and every data source then we need to disintegrate like uh, for each and every period of time how the data is going on like uh, for each and every type of um, case scenario how the data is going on on like that we need to disintegrate them uh, by as an each and every granule as i told like granule is the individual component of a data uh, we need to disintegrate them uh, then after disintegration we need to diagnose the nature of the data here the nature of the data is nothing but uh, like uh, what type of data it is like uh, whether it is a continuous data or uh, seasonal data or uh, discrete data or whether it is like uh, um, proper well formatted data or whether it is a raw data like uh, if it is raw data or how, what are all the things required to uh, refurbish them then uh, what with respect to diagnosis like um, um who is our target customer like uh, how we need to provide the data to them and then what else like uh, all those things we need to take care of, which is actually comes at the diagnosis uh, process then developing after diagnosing like uh, what is all that is required for the target uh, customer we need to uh, take a, uh, i mean we need to know them all and then we need to further proceed while proceeding i mean well during the implementation process we need to uh, involve i mean we need to make a certain amount of calculations calculations is like uh, for uh, structuring the data and then uh, in development process we need to uh, decide what kind of uh, chart we need to implement for this uh, report and uh, what uh, what are all the components which we can add additionally to this report all these things we need to calculate then uh, in demonstrate demonstrate is nothing but after uh, um, preparing the chart after once we get idea like uh, once we get idea about what kind of chart we need to do then we can implement them like after implementing we need to demonstrate this to the respective people uh, respective people in the sense like uh, target people like uh, whom for whom we are preparing this data for them we need to prepare while preparing that i mean while uh, giving the demonstration it's not demonstration is not like actual demonstration which you are going to give in front of them but the report which you are going to give them uh should itself say the story like what has happened and then what should be done as a next step uh so this is what is all about a data preparation process okay uh, so you can see the uh, extract transformation load uh, architecture uh, not architecture maybe a rough or a high level architecture uh here extract uh so you can see the this is maybe a excel file then comes the data source like this we can have a number of data source from which uh, here uh, this transformation engine is nothing but the tableaus in, in uh, built yes tableaus in built uh, components this component is actually uh, required for uh, processing the data here the data processing is nothing but um, maybe as i told like uh, doing some sort of class, uh, calculations or uh, mathematical approaches maybe implementing some algorithms and uh, using certain uh, uh, libraries so those things and all yes libraries are also possible in uh, tableau for that we can use a tap pi library for uh, including python calculations and uh, similarly like um, for if you want to um, get or put a data into r language then we have r serve library similarly we do have a number of libraries uh, to transform the data and then uh, after transforming the data we need to load them into the target um, uh, target in the sense like a target tableau shelf so here what do we consider tableau shelf is nothing but uh, okay after connecting to the respective data sources say for example
okay so this is the shelf where we are going to work with the uh, data like uh, these are all the data source and each and every data i mean connections are nothing but the data source and this is nothing but the data inside the data we are going to work on it so this is nothing but the shelf here we need to process the data like uh, if you don't want to um, have certain information then you can uh, remove them using the filters maybe i can create a filter here like uh, if i don't want uh, data of city uh maybe i don't want information about uh kanpur then i can click okay so this will uh, remove the uh, kanpur information and let us undo this okay so these are nothing but uh i mean this is the shelf where we will be working with the tableau of content of i mean data content okay uh, and then comes um, joins joins uh, most uh, those who are all from cs or uh, it might be mostly having a very well idea on this if guess if anyone is not into this stream then i'll give you this information uh, sql join sql join is nothing but uh, join concepts are uh, like features that that aims us to compare or uh, two different tables but in this case the joins happens only for same schema we can't uh, compare with um, more than two tables we can compare with tables but that happens externally this is a uh, core technical concepts like in case if you are uh, willing to connect with any particular database uh, database uh, table then in that case uh, you need to you can compare with two more i mean two or more tables uh, how can you do all these things while connecting with the uh, database itself it will like, give you okay uh for interruption uh in sql joins like um okay uh in sql joins you can do only join operation join operation is nothing but combining two tables and comparing with the each other's primary key or uh, and uh, the foreign key maybe like uh depending upon the situation uh primary key is nothing but the um unique key of any table say for example uh, let us have a table of uh, employees details in that employee id will be unique id for each and every employee id similarly uh, if you want to get the details from compare with the table of uh, hr hr will also be having the details of each and every employee with his own id so here in both the tables like employee id is a common number i mean common I mean, not common even unique key so compare these two keys key is nothing but like a uh, value <clears throat> uh with this value we can compare and we can make a combining i mean combination say for example uh, as i told before uh, like uh, let us go ahead for this uh, different types of joins uh, there are four types of joins like inner join outer join left join and full join i mean uh, inner join right join left join and full join full join is can also be called as outer join uh, inner join is like uh, if, if you want only the common data then you get the uh, common data i mean the data that are common together for both uh, inner table and left table as well as the right table and uh, in case if you want a uh, data for all the tables in spite of common thing then you need to go for this um, outer join Outer join is nothing. I mean, but uh, it is similar to this uh, union concept. While inner join is similar to intersection concepts. Uh, left join is like it will have information about the common thing, 
as well as the left uh, table details. While right join is similarly, we'll have information about the common thing and uh, right side details. Okay. So moving towards the essential principles in data visualization. Uh, these are all the, uh, this might be looking as very simple things for you like, uh, but still uh, from the professional ethics perspective, like it is very important to maintain the standard of the report which you're going to generate for your client or customer, whoever it may be. Because everybody can create um, charts and graphs, but uh, making it as a meaningful thing is very important and very difficult for many people, to be frank. So, everybody can create a graphs but only the respective data analyst can mean it like uh, whenever the person who is uh, working on a data obviously it is a common thing like whoever knows something about i mean whoever knows something uh, clear details about the uh, task or on object then he only can explain it in a better way. Uh, so like uh, our graphs or charts should be uh, like a, a proper thing, like uh, everybody should be able to understand it. Uh, if someone doesn't understand your report, then the entire box which you have spent on it is not going to be useful. Then uh, how our graphs or charts should be looking like uh, to, to the user. Like uh, say for example, if a person is asking, like uh, how much sales has happened in this quarter. It should not only give the information to that, like uh, this much amount of sales has happened. This everybody can give, but uh, this, uh, your answer should be in such way, like uh, how much, uh, I mean, uh, sales has happened along with that. Uh, what is the reason for this uh, fall or what is the reason for the rise of the sales? That also you should uh, give them as a package. Because if you give all of them together as a package, then obviously it will be going to be more helpful for them in making decisions. Then uh, um, many people might be thinking like uh, coloring the uh, graphs, like uh, giving more number of colors will give you more uh, better uh, view or a better um, understanding. Actually, it is not true. Like uh, whenever it is actually required, we can go ahead with colors. Say for example, let us take an example of um, hmm, Amazon. Amazon is more there in more than some maybe minimum it should be more than in uh, some 50 to 60 countries. So uh, in that case if um, he or she, if any uh, person from Amazon asks us to generate a report for them like uh, how, how does the sales of Amazon maybe in uh, last one year or two years then in that case like uh, their task is like their main objective is like uh, they need to find out like wherever the sales has uh, improved a lot and wherever the sales has come down or uh, wherever the sales is uh, moderate like that if they want to capitalize me in that case instead of going to all those 50 countries representing with 50 colors they can represent all those 50 countries with the 50 different i mean not 50 with just three different colors or a gradient uh, gradient in the sense like a dark blue medium normal or normal blue and then comes light blue or sky blue similarly uh, just with the degradation of the color, we can find out, okay, if the density of this color is very high here, I mean, uh, okay, uh, if the sales has uh, come with a medium color blue, then the sales is moderate over there. And uh, if the sales is uh, with the, uh, less uh, blue or sky blue, then the sales is not so good or impressive over there. Like that we can calculate. Uh, so it depends on the requirement. Uh, it's, that's what we used to say, like a coloring is actually a uh, careful thing which we need to do. I mean, coloring in the sense like uh, choosing the colors because um, it is not actually more, it is very important uh, to be more distinct, but it is not more uh, important to be vibrant. Uh, when we're creating a dashboard in such a way that uh, uh, you need not explain the story. The story is nothing but the um, content what has happened or content what we are delivering in the dashboard. So how our dashboards uh, should look like uh, means like uh, each 
itself should uh, be capable enough to express the details of our content say for example like uh, uh, in the last example i told right uh, it, it should not only give you the information about the sales it should also give you information like uh, why the sales has come down like uh, what is the reason behind maybe they would have imposed uh, some uh, discount uh, because of the discount the sales would have been increased for that reason we need to put a uh, maybe no uh, sales as well as discount are increased the profit might be less because the proportion may be uh, reverse i mean uh, inversely proportional it could be maybe uh, the, uh, though the sales might increase the profit might uh, come down because of giving more discount those things are not we need to give in uh, in the chart in a better way and uh, each and every time like uh, the uh, data visualization visualization engineer need not be required to explain his report uh, once he develops a report uh, it should be in such a way like uh, that report should speak uh, to each and every one of them like uh, every time then uh, understanding the need and proceeding with a visualization method and type okay so here it is actually nothing but uh, you might be having a good enough amount of data like uh, Mm. maybe uh, climate data or something like that uh, for each and every type of data for each and every type of uh, task for each and every type of requirement uh, there could be a suitable uh, chart type or um, graph type that we need to choose if the data is continuous then we need to go for this uh, line wave if the data is uh, distinguished i mean uh, discrete maybe if it is not a continuous data then we can go for this bar chart or a pie chart or as even we can go for this histogram depending upon the requirement and one more thing is like uh, um when we need to use which type of graph say for example ah we used to call uh, this horizontal bars stacked bars and side by side bars as sister graphs because a uh, uh, normal bar graph or a horizontal or vertical whatever it may be is a primary graph then comes the stacked bar graphs and the side by side bar graphs are external version maybe you can go ahead uh, you can use this for a comparative end of study say for example in bar graph you can compare uh, the data between a um, maybe uh, if you want to find the sales of each and every country for amazon in one year you can get uh, those details with the normal bar chart or uh, um, bar chart in case if you want to compare with the, the sales of 2020 and 2019 of each and every country i mean of all the 15 countries then we need to go for this uh, side by chart side by side bars with that you can calculate and uh, then in case if you want to calculate the same thing like uh, maybe uh, you have faced some kind of losses in the last one year and uh, if you want to compare the same profit if you want to compare the same profit for 2020 then you can go ahead with uh, the stack bar chart because uh, in case uh, like uh, maybe you, um, that will give you uh, the comparison then uh, this line chart continuous and this is a discrete one and uh, this is dual lines uh, let, let me tell you like if you want to go ahead with a comparison kind of thing then obviously you need to go towards this uh, dual axis say for example like if you want to compare the relationship between two objects maybe in terms of like um, this tableau uh, this is an uh, inter, i mean a uh, good uh, example for tableau in case if any person was in this meeting belongs to a chemical industry or something like that then obviously you can easily do one thing like you can um, find the relationship between a metal and a heat while heating the same metal at one point of time what is happening like uh, what are the changes that are happening you can plot them as a graph <coughs> sorry uh like that you can compare let me do a comparison here um 
connect to a data or let me check with the excel data i'm going to compare the details of superstore okay so now let us consider uh, each and every country's sales or uh, let me make it as <clears throat> let me compare the difference between sales and let me do a comparison between the sales and profit uh, let me go take the order date for better clarity <clears throat> so this belongs to each and every country uh, let me just take one country alone oh. i don't want information about all the country i just want information about maybe belgium okay so here you can understand like uh, the sales and profit are uh, directly proportional to each other like whenever the sales is happening more profit is more so like uh, what is the major task that is behind i mean uh, left in front of <coughs> amazon is like uh, to increase the number of sales uh, so uh, if he wants to increase the number of sales then what he needs to do let us check whether whether he needs to give uh, this thing discount or not i mean uh, he or she didn't give any uh, discount so only thing is like they needs to increase the sales to improve the profit how can they increase the sales like uh, they can increase the sales by advertising or something like that they can get uh, some kind of information or <coughs> i'm sorry <coughs> sorry they can get information from this graph like uh, uh i mean this will give them the information like uh, they need not require to give more discount on this because uh, people are not expecting for a uh, discount they are expecting for something else they can understand like okay fine this is what is being required now okay like that they will get to know let me go for france okay so france people are expecting for more discount and they increase more this i mean they uh, i mean to say like uh, when there is more discount is being given for france people then obviously sales and profit are improving in case if i want to go for germany germany is also the same thing let me i mean let us check like is there any country where discount is not being bothered okay so this is a different scenario here uh, in spite of giving a normal amount of discount still uh, though the sales has improved because of discount uh, the profit has come down they they are expecting for discount they need something else what is it something else maybe the quality in the product or the quantity of the product or maybe the longevity of the product maybe that they need to dis uh, discuss so like uh, this is uh, the understanding which we can get from this tableau visualization so like this is how we need to uh, understand each and every time right now i'm telling like this is the reason how this should be viewed but uh, each and every time i can go and explain each and every person from my client right so i need to give the report they let i mean my report will make them understand okay fine this is the reason like what we need to do those things and all it will 
help us to do. Okay, then comes um, understand the significance. Okay, fine. Uh, this is like a, a not and uh, putting all the data in one dashboard is a good thing. Like uh, see, let us take an example from here itself. Uh, see uh, now, if I put all the details here, this is not so clear and uh, fine. So we need to check whether all the details are required. No, I mean, uh, say for example, if I'm going to give this information uh, itself in the dashboard, uh, then how should I do? Let me hide this track. Uh, I'm going to put uh, the sales in the label, profit in the label. And similarly, I would want to include the discount also in the label. Okay, fine. Now let us consider if I'm going to put this into the dashboard. Okay, fine. Uh, now, how it is going to work? Uh, okay, so like this, uh, though we have got. Uh, we have put all this information here. Now we are going to give this uh, filter feature to the person who is going to read. So using this filter feature, he will get to understand like, okay, uh, for each and every country, how does it work uh, like that? Uh, he will get to know. Maybe I'll uh, let him uh, check like for Austria, how it is working for Belgium, what's happening like that. Uh, he will think. So like uh, instead of giving all this information together, we just need to put like a, what is the exact information. Just by adding that uh, filter component, we have ensured like uh, uh, no more data are being uh, put into more more details are put in the uh, graph or chart. Then um, and one more thing is like uh, uh, while putting all those data in the dashboard, the major thing which we need to follow is like. Uh, the data should be from left to right because actually it is our nature or tendency to find the re I mean to read the data first day from the left because that is how we have been trained whatever the things which you are going to put as a very important thing that should be in the left hand side whatever the details you are going to put in the with the less significant they, they should have been put in the I mean you should put them in the right hand side so that is why we need to check uh, here also we can uh, uh, understand that uh, here we just need to put the select the countries but uh, our data requirement is here one in the left hand side so from this we will get to know like uh, how the graph should be i mean how the chart should be expressed or exposed okay so like uh, what is the advantages of this data visualization this way data visualization needs a perception perception in the sense like uh, See, for example, I'm going to prepare a report, a chart for a person X. If that person X is a manager or he could be an uh, employer or he could be a CEO, whoever it may be. Like from his perspective, I need to view the data. Only if uh, possible, only if, I mean, only if that is possible, then only I can uh, figure out like what is his requirement would be. Then I can understand like uh, i mean after understanding i can present the data in such a way that uh, he will understand it in a better way then uh, breakthrough analysis breakthrough analysis is like uh, say for example if you are going to um, take some decision based on your report uh, then it will be uh, it will be more important like uh, after it helps you to get a bre breakthrough for a solution i mean for a problem Okay, easy understanding our report should be like uh, it's it should be like very easy to understand uh, like uh, it should not uh, make you to feel uh, uncomfortable or discomfortable to understand because easy understanding reports are very important i mean very important is like a very um, a likable kind of thing and the formulating future objectives based on this report uh, people will uh, formulate your future objectives objective in the sense like uh, their goals maybe uh, 
say for example in the last quarter this much is received like means like maybe in the next quarter how much uh, they would keep sales as a target like that they can uh, formulate their future uh, objectives and also it can help us to uh, measure the metrics of finance and administration like uh, maybe it will help it will also help us to understand like uh, how much they need to invest further how much uh, employees they need to add next or how much employees they need to remove all those things it can uh, help us to understand and analyze and also like uh, you are not the only person who should understand your visualization yes but also uh, you should have also your own signature say for example there are n number of uh, data visualization engineers across the world one thing is like uh, everyone on uh, doing their uh, i mean uh, the task same task like analyzing the data but each and every person has their own way of uh, displaying them like uh, whatever the data which you are going to display them they should have uh, its own originality and there should be no compromise in that uh, but uh, uh, keeping on the signature nature alone in our mind is not going to be useful we should also put them in such a way that uh, it is being understandable for each and every person like uh, there should be no person uh, says i've been telling like uh, your data is not being so clear for us i am unable to understand your data it should not be like that so we need to excuse me sorry for the something what to call okay so now let us go for a scenario based question like uh, what's happening like uh, we need to get information from the graph i mean like uh, we need to get the count of vehicles that has moved in each and every state uh, get the count of other state vehicles in each and every state classify them with respect to uh in every moment this is the task like we need to do now okay so now let us generate the data let us have a large amount of data maybe 30000 rows okay Okay, fine. Now this table have got uh, some thirty thousand rows. Okay, fine. Let us close this. let us get the data from excel file <clears throat> okay uh, let us do it one by one maybe uh, let us find the state with more heavy traffic uh, so our task is like uh, we need to find the uh, states which are having more traffic we can go with uh, this thing as well like um, maybe graph or uh, chart but uh, instead since it is going to be like a geographical information we are going to uh, go ahead for this uh, added longitude component maybe uh, let me do it here okay fine 
now let us make uh, the count for that let us create a cafe vehicles count count of vehicle type okay so according to uh, this uh, we have come to a conclusion like uh, up vehicles i uh, mean traffic in up uh, andhra pradesh then comes the other uh, cities so like uh, with this information with this single click uh, this will give you an information okay fine traffic is more in up okay then classify the state or city with more old vehicles okay uh, let we need to classify the vehicles uh, nature how will we uh, i mean uh, whether it is old or new that we can do with the help of this bs4 stage and bs5 stage how can we do that for that we need to go for this uh, <coughs> capital tree let us name it as vehicle density let us create another uh, worksheet and then let us name it as uh, ve vehicles and uh, we are going to find it with respect to the city we are going to create a calculated field this calculated field will have information about the vehicle ages oh if B stage equal to um, B S hyphen four. Then old else if B stage equal to Yes. Hyphen V. Then moderate. Else V S stage No, I mean to say like uh, here it is not required. And uh, whatever the functions or whatever the uh, script you are writing here, it is all necessary to complete it with an end keyword. Then uh, one more thing is like uh, it is an additional point. If you are uh, integrating with a uh, I mean Python. Say like if you are uh, pulling the data directly from Python and going to uh, say here. In that case, you need to go for this uh, tab type coding, and that coding you can just copy paste here. I mean you you can just copy paste your Python code here. vehicle count
So in Bangalore, there are 725 vehicles in moderate condition, which means they comes under uh, this thing like uh, Hmm. So this will give you information about uh, how many vehicles are um, Fine, let it be like this itself. So we have found like uh, this is this belongs to like a BS type um, four. Uh, sorry, five. This belongs to BS type six, and this belongs to BS type four. <clears throat> then comes the list of. Vehicles with respect to movements, uh, vehicles movements count. Um, movements count is like um, maybe some cities may be having more vehicles. So this will give you information about uh, how many, what type of vehicles are going in each and every uh, this uh, city. <clears throat> then get the count of other ship vehicles in every state. Okay, uh, other state vehicle count. Um, let me go for the city. Uh, let us create a calculated field. Maybe let me call it as a WB vehicle count. Uh, like what it should have in this means like uh, maybe it, it needs a count of uh, starts with the vehicle number comma I just want only WB. Okay. And now let's create a capital field. 
Oh, I need a key vehicle count. Trying to put a KL, KL, uh, UP, vehicle, count, count, uh, followed by task group, uh, vehicle number, UP. Team vehicle calculation or count. Count MP count of transmit uh, income number comma MP. Okay, so now let us count.
okay so now we have got our information about each and every vehicle so our cost each and every city i mean other state vehicles information um vehicle count Yes, uh, I mean it's not going to be so you know, important like that. So this is what is required. As I understood, with respect to vehicles movement count, like uh, we need to find out which city is having more vehicle movement uh, on which date. Vehicles count. What is it to ask? Let us do it in a different way, like uh, I'm going to uh, combine. Let me create a uh, create combine the state vehicles count. Mm -hmm. From north to vehicle count. From north
Okay, fine. So Yes, ma'am. Hi, or not? Or it seems. No, no, I didn't speak. Okay. Actually, participants are asking that our voice is not coming. That's why. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm not speaking. Uh, actually, I'm doing this uh, calculation feed. Okay, sir. Uh, sorry, this is an additional thing which I'm trying to do, uh, but uh, this condition is actually done. Like uh, this real-time scenario is done, and uh, I think this might take some time for me to figure out like what is the actual thing which I'm trying to do. Uh, what I'm trying to do is let me tell you like uh, what is the comparison between each and every state's vehicle with respect to total all of the state's vehicle. And uh, however, uh, you know, we will to do this for a, 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 a particular city because uh, since I have got six cities, if you want to put all those six cities in a single dashboard, it is impossible because like, um, uh, I mean, dashboard size is like maximum of two size of monitor if you uh, publish it. Uh, beyond that size, if you want to get information about each and every state, then we need to go for a separate Then we need to go for a separate, uh, I mean to say like um, uh, separate dashboards and stories. So that's how it works. So let me create a dashboard for this here. Um,
let me create the dashboard. Actually, this is not required because it's a universal thing. Like everybody knows this. Okay, oh, then I need information about the aged vehicles. Vehicles count. And this is information about the other shit vehicles. Okay, so as I told, what is the major information which is required? It's like uh, we need to find out what is the which are all the um, older vehicles. So this older vehicles information can be found here like this. Um, so these are the maximum number of, I mean total vehicles passed through that uh, in fact I mean. Okay, now comes uh, the city list.
Okay, uh, so I think uh, if you have added a uh, filters option, then it will be even more looking beautiful. Uh, but uh, since I have uh, started doing this thing, I couldn't, uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil this further. That's why I have done it like this. Okay, uh, this is another way of uh, doing this. Uh, then here you can see like uh, what are all the Okay. Oh, let me enlarge this. So here we have got information for all those uh, requirements. And I think uh, this should be more and more sufficient. And uh, if we would have added filters for these three things, then it would be more like, uh, let me tell you like how it will work if I add filters. Um, maybe uh, this belongs to this. If I want to tap it like uh, this, this city. Yeah, I can do it like this. Uh, city. So filter. Ah, this filter will be visible on the visible for me here. In this case, I could have added other filter. Based on that filter, I could have uh, calculated this information in a better way. Mm. Mm. Let me add, no problem. Um, okay, fine. Then I think we need to create a new dashboard or something like that. Uh, let it be like this because uh, this should be fine actually. Okay, so I think uh, this should be giving you a better information. Uh, and uh, here, instead of uh, this graph, we can also go for this pie chart. But uh, if you are rep representing it as a pie chart, the problem is like uh, you need to enter the details again. Say, let me show you here that information. Um, vehicles count city so 
ஓகே ஒன் டூ டூ ஃபோர் ஃபைவ் ஸ்டார் ரேட்டிங் வந்துட்டு ஒன் ஆர் மினிட்ஸ் தான் நான் ஓகே ஒன் ஆர் மினிட்ஸ் ஆகும் டூ ஷேர் Uh, yes, ma'am. Actually, we can do. But if you want to do it again, then I need to create the dashboard again. That is why I did, uh, skip that process. It is actually a doable thing. Here I have mentioned it like this. Again, for this I need to uh, enter this details. Maybe count vehicle type in uh, this label. So this is not very clear actually. It is also doable, but uh, most of the time will not be going towards a pie chart because pie chart is actually good. Only if the classification is less. Maybe ah uh, let me do it uh, here. Ah, uh, if I want to cut short the cities count, then is that. So filter. I don't want all the cities. I just want uh, three cities, or oh, four cities maybe. Uh, now I would like to enter the count of this vehicle. It is already there. Okay. So this is not actually so uh, worth enough to do it. Uh, I mean. If the difference is also very less, then there is no use in it. So that's why we'll be mostly moving towards either line graph or bar chart. Uh, if not possible, then we need to go for other graphs. Uh, we can go with respect to this heat map and uh, this thing. I mean, not this one. Ah, tree map. In where, whenever you got like uh, maybe. Mm, mm. when you should go for this uh, tree chart means to say for example uh, if you are going uh, for calculation of uh, any uh, grading kind of thing the students have come across i mean have uh, passed out uh, maybe a uh, high secondary examination in each and every state uh, maybe and whatever the person which they have got uh, those kind of gradation things and all we can go ahead with this uh, heat map and those things and all and uh, area map is like uh, area map is actually a advanced version of this line graph these three line maps uh, line graphs can be called as a sister graphs and these two oh, can be called as advanced graphs and let me show you an example for the dual axis graph dual dual axis graph is actually nothing but um, for dual axis graph let me go for uh, other thing so i hope uh, this dashboard should be fine for you all uh Okay. Uh, let me uh, uh, add another uh, data source. I'd like to go for this thing. Uh, I want to go ahead with uh, this thing. Um, It's too funny. See here, uh, since in this Excel file the data is more, it is taking more time. So in that case, if I go for a distributed tableau environment, then I need to add another node. Another node is nothing but another server. So like partial task is being done will be done in this machine, and the rest of the task will be done in another machine. Uh, see, I want to come back. Let me go for state. Okay. Ah, uh, in this state, I would like to compare the sales and profit. Mm. 
I would like to go for this uh, dual axis graph. For dual axis graph, I need a date column. Some profit. Uh, the reason or like why we are going for this kind of graph is like we can compare the two parameters of uh, any I mean uh, data see here like we are going to compare the data of a profit and the sales for that we are going to use the same thing uh, mostly how we will be doing uh, this dual axis graph means uh, for one thing we'll be going for bar chart and another one is for we'll be going for this line chart so that uh, from the long term perspective maybe let me do it like this so this will help you to get a more understanding So this one is uh, profit and this one is sales. So like that, it will help you to get more information. And uh, this quick table calculation is another thing like where you can go for this running total a difference between uh, two cells. Say for example, if I want to find a difference between uh, the sales of the same company in the same city between these two years means then I can go with that uh, percentage difference I mean uh, difference then percentage difference maybe if the sales has come up maybe maybe if I buy if I maybe like a very the five percent increase then it will give you the percentage difference like how much percentage difference the sales has are arisen up we can get the information then uh, year over year growth uh, moving average percentage all these kinds of calculations can be done in using the quick table calculation. Okay, so this is all about uh, Tableau. So now let us go to dashboard and compare with our, our this thing, essential principles. I hope like everybody can understand like what is happening here if we put uh, filters here. then create um, mostly this will uh, the reason why uh, this graph is being uh, requested is like uh, to get more ideas on traffic uh, management uh, so this will obviously help uh, to get more information about the graphs i mean uh, will help them to create more uh, policies or something like that uh, let us uh, say like a moderator in which city uh, traffic, I mean, more uh, old vehicles are being used in the city. Uh, like uh, people are not buying more uh, new vehicles. The reason is like the service tax could be uh, maybe for in Pondicherry cases, like uh, um, since road tax in Pondicherry is very less, people will buy uh, cars or two wheelers in Pondicherry and then they will take to their own places. Maybe to nearby states like Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, or Bangalore, I mean, uh, AP, whatever it, wherever it may be. So, like uh, these are all the things they can devise. Or, okay, fine. Here the road tax is very high, so people are not buying new vehicles. Uh, so they are using you know, old BS4 vehicles. So what we need to do? Like that, they will uh, analyze and they will uh, proceed in formulating the policies. Uh, and then vehicles count. So according to this, like which vehicle is moving more in which city? So if heavy vehicles are moving in one city, then they need to create a bypass so that they can bypass the traffic. So that the city remains are less traffic uh, oriented. Like that they can uh, analyze it. And uh, with respect to other straight vehicle, uh, here also they can go ahead with a bypass outer ring road or something like that, which will obviously help in um, reducing the traffic inside the city. And 
uh, here uh, UP is uh, having more uh, traffic. Uh, maybe they can analyze it like uh, because of more sugar industries, uh, more factories, and it, it could be the reasons like that. So they can work on it, like how to improve the state, like that they can work. So what is the next point? Ah, so here, like uh, we haven't used many colors, we have used only a pattern of colors. Here, why we have used for colors is like, without any uh, reason, like we need to differentiate each and everything. That is why we have uh, colored them. Oh. Uh, and also I think uh, this dashboard with this title, you can uh, correlate uh, in a better way, I guess. That would be much difficult for you in understanding like what's happening in this graph. Then, uh, okay, fine. Uh, we haven't used uh, the, I mean, irrelevant type. In case if you have used uh, line charts here or line graph, then uh, the, the, that would be like uh, more visible here because uh, since uh, the difference won't be uh, too high so that uh, you'll not be able to read out the graph quickly and understand the significance and priority. Okay, fine. So here, what are the things that are mostly important? Aged vehicles and vehicles count. Uh, these two are actually more important because uh, this is uh, just with the site, we can uh, understand like, what's happening in this graph. Uh, then other ship vehicles. Uh, this uh, is actually important, but uh, since there is no space with respect to this dashboard, I have kept here. Usually the requirement which we'll be getting will not be uh, in a way like uh, they need to, I mean, like uh, we need to congest it the dashboard with the many data. It would be like that. Instead, uh, we'll be creating uh, maybe another dashboard if required. Uh, then understand the significance, okay. Okay, obviously this will give you a breakthrough analysis and uh, this will help in future objective formulation, those things and all. And uh, this is like uh, maybe my way, way of uh, presenting a dashboard. And uh, I hope this will be uh, easily understood for everyone. So that's all from my side, guys. This is everything uh, clear for you all. If you have any doubt, you can uh, ask me. Participants, do you have any questions? If you have any questions, put them into the chat box. Uh, she's asking like, how can a specific color map in chart, right? Uh, can I take the screen, ma'am, once? Usha, ma'am. Uh, how to add color means like, uh, you need to end, uh, end, I mean, select whichever the dimension or measures which you want to make it color and you have to drag drop to this color panel. Once you bring that here, the color changes happens here. And uh, you can see those color changes here. And uh, still, if you want to uh, go ahead with your own color, then we need to go uh, edit colors from here like this, whichever color you want. Uh, these are all the patterns which are available by default in Tableau. Participants, do you have any more questions? So one of our participants are asked that, uh, can you show the visualization? Um, which visualization, ma'am? Uh, Dashboard. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. 
vehicle density issue. density okay I said, do you have any doubt on this? We can speak. He's not able to speak. Uh, please unmute the spike. Uh, yes, I mean, sir. Un unmute the mic and speak. Hello. So now you can speak. Ah, yes. Hello. Ah, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I am audible. Yes, you are audible. Yes, uh, sir. One question I want to ask. Uh, suppose uh, we have uh, some calculation field, uh, like uh, uh, we can say. Suppose uh, I I have uh, in, instead of in columns, rows and columns, longitude and latitude. If I have some calculation, suppose I have average values. So okay. there is one option. When we click on this, there is an option either you will have to calculate using some count or whatever. And yes. the same option will be available in marks also. Is there any difference between both? Same options available in marks. Marks in the sense? Like suppose in, in, um, in marks field, you have a uh, calculation like total number this of... Mark fields. This is a mark field, ma'am. Is this yes. what you're speaking? Okay. Yes. Suppose I have a one... Uh, uh, no, no, here not. Uh, Suppose I have a one calculation field like uh, number of vehicles, average number of vehicles or sum of vehicles or distance count. Okay. So the same thing we will do in the marks also and we will do in the rows and columns also at the top. Uh, so the reason is like uh, if you want distinct with color or if you want to put the label in this uh, dashboard, then we need to go uh, use this marks else uh, actually, you just want to. Uh, actually, sir, I have a visualization. Can I show you my visualization yes. also? Yes, you can. Actually, can you can you can I share my screen? Yes, you can. Okay. Okay, it is actually it is disabled. Ah, uh, wait. Let me stop this sharing my screen. Ah, no, yes, it is. Can... Okay, well. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I am just uh, collecting some uh, data data of a stock exchange and uh, I am just creating a visualization for that. Okay. Uh, I want to ask, suppose you are able to see my screen? Yes, I can see. Oh, suppose, uh, suppose I have a, a sheet of high and low data and where in columns I have a calculation like uh, it's major, uh, I am calculating by using sum. Uh, okay. The same, the same thing I will do average also median and count also. Yes. But uh, also the same thing will be asking here also major and sum is there any difference for different no both are same both are same yes or it will give the size or not no suppose like I, so, so no suppose if i make as this is equal to sum like suppose i am changing in a percentage change and same thing i will do in here i will convert into the average then is there any difference because here in marks it will uh, saying this is a calculation of sum and here it will saying the change so where the changes will be applicable uh, wait, let me, wait yes. let me tell you if you want to do uh, the changes in the visualization maybe here and if you want to have the changes to be done here then go ahead with this and yes. this thing actually t uh, letter with the t is actually to get give you the information about this graph okay Suppose, uh, uh, suppose in my marks, I have a uh, calculation measure has a sum. Suppose okay. I will change into, now I will convert into the sum. So what, what, what the changes will there be There is no difference, graph? right? Yes. There is no difference in the graph, right? Okay, I think. I, that's why I'm asking, is there any difference or... No, is there the, no. Okay. okay, okay. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay. okay, thank you. Participants, do you have any more questions?
No questions, sir. Oh, thank you. That was Bye. a brilliant session, sir. Great presentation with a lot of specific and helpful information. Thank you so much for sharing your proficiency. Thank you, ma'am.